Hello guys, let's get started. Add a cube and scale it up to two times. Now set the viewport display to wire. We don't want to see the cube inside the viewport. Add an icosphere which will be the rigid body object. Keep subdivisions at 3. Add a particle system to the cube. The cube will emit 10 spheres. To have 10 spheres inside the cube, frame n must be 1. Also, the spheres must be inside the cube. So we set the emit from the volume. The other thing we need to change now is instead of having the default spheres, have the icosphere we created earlier. We customized the scale of the spheres and how they are positioned before we apply the particle system. We need to see the real mesh of the spheres instead of the polis. We set the display mode of the cube back to solid and disable in particle system settings. Now we have our spheres. We need to add a modifier to the spheres. The spheres are not going to get deformed. So our option is limited to rigid body modifier. To have an accurate calculation when the spheres collide with each other we set the shape type to mesh. Also. The rigid body type must be active as they move. The other important value inside rigid body modifier is sensitivity margin. The option will set the distance between the spheres when they collide with each other. Now we have set a rigid body modifier for one sphere. We want to apply that modifier to other spheres. So we select the all spheres and then the one with rigid body modifier. Go to objects rigid body and select the copy from active option. In this step, we add a collision modifier to all spheres one by one. The collision modifier must have 0.01 as thickness outer value. The collision modifier will be used to let the cloth object which we add later collide with spheres. And thickness outer will set the distance of the cloth object and spheres for colliding.
Let's add some forces to attract the spheres to the middle point of the scene. We start with force and leave its strength to one to see how the spheres behave. The spheres fall down. We need to disable the gravity as we don't need that for this scene. For force field, if you use a positive number the spheres will get far away from each other. So, we use a negative number and also add noise to randomize how the force field affects the spheres. Let's add turbulence to randomize how the spheres move even more. We change two values here. First, strength which defines how strong the turbulence field is. Also, size which indicates the scale of the noise. We need another field force here to let spheres spin. So, we add a vortex field force. For the ribbon which wraps around the spheres, we use a torus and increase the outer radius. Also, we use shade smooth to make the geometry smooth. The only thing we need now is adding a cloth modifier to the torus. We increase the quality steps to have a more accurate cloth simulation. Also, we need to increase the quality steps of the collision to not let the ribbon moves through the spheres. The object collision distance must be set to 0.01 and also enable self collision. We decreased the tension and compression values to make the ribbon or the rubber less stiff. We also need to do something to shrink the rubber, like it wraps around the spheres. At 1F, we add a keyframe and leave the shrinking factor to be zero. Also, at 240F, we add a keyframe and change the value of this option to a number like 0.515. It seems we need to use a higher number for shrinking factor to make the rubber wraps around the spheres in 240 frames. Don't need to be worried about the abnormal behavior of the spheres when they get attracted. 
It can be fixed either by bake the simulation or increase the accuracy of the rigid body simulation. As the last step to complete the simulation setup, we need to remove how field forces affect the cloth simulation. We have added field forces to only affect the spheres. We got a weird result at the end of the fourth step. It was because the number of the keyframes we added defined th right amount for shrinking factor. So we remove the all keyframes of the shrinking factor and add a new one at 240 frame. Also, we add a subdivision surface modifier to the torus to make it smooth as it's a cloth object and needs to be smooth. The other reason we add a subdivision surface modifier is we need to increase the number of the polis have a better look while we add the textures and displacement. Thanks for watching the first part of the tutorial to keep this channel active and also make me motivated to release more videos like this. I decided to split the second part and release that one on my Patreon page. For the second part, we will learn how to recreate the all materials using procedural materials and add lighting.